My name is Kate Luma, and I am the Associate Conservator of Modern and Contemporary Art at the Denver Art Museum. Conservation is a profession dedicated to the preservation of artworks. It includes activities to prevent damage, as well as treatment to stabilize and repair artworks if damage occurs. I'm here today to talk with you about how I approach plastics. This information could be helpful to you in caring for your own plastic treasures, as well as creating with plastics if you're an artist. As a conservator, I base my approach to materials on science. We can learn a lot about plastics and how they behave by understanding a bit about their chemistry. Like living organisms, plastics are for the most part organic, which in chemistry means that they're based on the element carbon. Not surprisingly, the same agents that cause us harm also damage plastics, like UV light, free radicals, and oxidation. Plastics are also polymers. Poly means multiple and mer means part or unit. So a polymer molecule is a long chain of repeating units. This type of structure has everything to do with the physical properties of plastics, such as high strength and low weight, flexibility, moldability, and even the transparency of some plastics. There are two main types of plastics, thermoplastic and thermoset. The molecular structure of thermoplastics can be thought of as a jumble of long separate strands, like a bowl of spaghetti noodles. When heat is applied, the strands separate and move around, and what we observe is that the solid thermoplastic material melts and becomes liquid when heated. Thermoplastics can be melted and cooled repeatedly, which allows for recycling and thermoforming. They can also be dissolved by solvents, which easily work their way between the strands, which can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what you're trying to do. Common thermoplastics you might have around the house are polyethylene and Tupperware, PET and soda bottles, vinyl and upholstery, and plexiglass. Collectors might have objects made of cellulose nitrate and cellulose acetate. Thermosets, on the other hand, behave more like cake. They start out as a liquid mixture, are poured into a mold, and then cure into a solid. The resulting solid will not melt when heated. Here, the long polymer chains are all interconnected with crosslinks. When heat is applied, the crosslinks hold all the molecules in place and the material remains solid. The crosslinks also mean that thermosets are hard to dissolve with solvents. We think of thermosets as being quite chemically resistant. Common thermosets include the polyester resin and fiberglass, epoxy, and silicon rubber. Collectors might have objects made out of phenol formaldehyde, known by its brand name, Bakelite. A bit of trivia, there was an early thermoset material called Bois de C, which was actually made out of sawdust and blood. Plastics have varying degrees of chemical and physical stability. The early plastics, cellulose nitrate and cellulose acetate, are inherently unstable. Over time, they can shrink, warp, crack, and eventually disintegrate. Cellulose nitrate can even spontaneously combust. It is best to keep objects made of these materials away from other collectibles as they give off harmful gases as they deteriorate. Modern plastics tend to be more stable in good environmental conditions, hence their reputation for permanence in the, in the environment. However, agents such as heat, UV, invisible light, humidity, and pollutants can lead to degradation. Some plastics still in common use, like PVC and rubber, tend to be less stable, and newer bioplastics are designed to degrade in the environment and may break down more quickly in museum storerooms as a result. Plastics are also somewhat fragile. They're vulnerable to being scratched or chipped when being handled or used. Even routine cleaning can cause scratches over time. I recommend dusting with an air puffer rather than a brush or cloth whenever you can. To preserve plastics for longer, keep them in cool and dark conditions as much as possible. In the museum, we sometimes store unstable plastics in lower temperatures, though be careful doing this yourself as some plastic objects could be damaged by low temperatures. We also sometimes use oxygen-free packages like for these rubber balls on the right. As we learned earlier, thermoplastics can be sensitive to solvents, leading to issues like the cracking we are seeing in this cup. When working with plastics as artists and conservators, we have to be careful in choosing cleaners and adhesives. In conservation, we mostly use water-based materials to avoid damage. Another challenge is that many plastics have a property called low surface energy which means that liquids, especially water, do not wet the surface very well and bead up instead, as you see on the right. The upshot is that inks, paints, adhesives, and the like don't stick very well to plastics. 
That's why in the picture of an artwork on the left, the bronze colored spray paint is flaking off the plastic leaf. This is especially a problem with polyethylene and polypropylene. So be aware if you are interested in painting on plastics or assembling them with adhesives. I hope this has given you a helpful introduction to plastics, their properties, and how to work with them. Thank you for your attention. If you're interested in learning more, there are some great resources online.